Today's gospel and the transfiguration of Jesus is one that has been written about in all three of the synoptic gospels. The gospel of Matthew, which we just heard, the gospel of Mark, and of Luke. And this calendar year, we have been blessed to have this feast day, which is celebrated always on August the 6th, the fall on a Sunday. And you may recall that this reading from Matthew was read during Lent in March, as this mystery would affirm the true identity of Jesus as someone who was much more than anyone could possibly imagine. The transfiguration of Christ is the culminating point of his public life. Just as his baptism in the Jordan River was the starting point, and his ascension would be the end of his earthly mission. The mention of the transfiguration in our reading today, second reading today, today supports this, since the apostles who were chosen to be there describe the event as eyewitnesses to his majesty and of his honor and glory, and are thus in a position to testify to his power. There is a need to have some context to understand the why of this revelation on a mountaintop. You see, it was about a week earlier when Jesus and his apostles were at Caesarea Philippi. And it was there that Jesus reveals to his followers what is awaiting him in Jerusalem. The question posed by Jesus was, who do people say that I am? It's quite an interesting and probably somewhat baffling question that was put to these men. And they were kind of struggling, I think, to find an answer. They had been with him for many years, for three years at least. So they do not seem to have any clear answers. They blurt out things like, John the Baptist, you're the, one of the great prophets. But then it's Peter. Who Peter comes forward and responds that Jesus is the son of the living God. And Jesus says to him, you would not have known this if it had not been revealed to you by the Father. And this will set the stage, so to speak, for what is to happen next. Now they're standing at a base of a mountain. And Jesus chooses only three of all the apostles, leaving nine at the base of the mountain. And Jesus leads them up on the ascent. And they are told, they are not told, why this is occurring. Which, I suppose, when you think about it, is a bit out of the ordinary. After all, they were usually told what they were about to do and the reason for their actions. But this is different. They are soon to find out how different. We hear in the gospel today of the mystical events that occur quite quickly. In fact, St. Matthew and St. Luke both express the phenomenon by a very long word, metamorphophi, which translates in the Vulgate Bible as transfiguratus est. He was transformed transfigured, more to the point, before their eyes. His face shone like the sun, and his garments became a dazzling white as the snow. Not so much in a physical sense, though. This brilliance emanated from his whole body, produced by an interior shining of his divinity. One can only imagine the shock they experienced to witness this supernatural event. And then we hear, just as quickly out of nowhere, stands Moses and Elijah. They are in conversation with Jesus about what is awaiting him in Jerusalem. Now that may beg the question to anybody that reads this gospel of why these two were present. It was 700 years separating both Moses and Elijah from one another. 
So why these two? Well, many Jews lived by a false Judaism who had rejected the Messiah. We know that Jesus was oftentimes rebuffed by the powers that be. He was rejected. Why? Because they felt threatened. Somebody came in that was threatening their place. Who was this carpenter from Nazareth? But now in the mountain, the true Judaism is represented by the amazing appearance of Elijah, the great prophet, and Moses, the giver of the law. You see, these two prophets recognized Jesus and adored him as they conversed with him. Then, for the second time, God the Father proclaims Jesus, his only only Son, the well-beloved, the begotten Son. And by this glorious manifestation, the divine Master, who had just foretold his passion to the apostles and spoke to Moses and Elijah of the trials that awaited him at Jerusalem, would truly strengthen their faith of his Three friends, and prepare them for the terrible struggle of which they were to be a witness to at Gethsemane, and by giving them a foretaste of the glory and heavenly delights to which we attain by suffering. If we look deeper into these events, we can discover three aspects that contribute to the Christological force. Christology is the study of Christ. Firstly, the visible alteration of Jesus demonstrates that he is more than merely a human teacher, more than just a rabbi. And secondly, his association with Moses and Elijah demonstrates his messianic role. And thirdly, the voice from heaven declares his identity as the Son of God. Glory has been revealed on the mountain. And it is a unique incident within Jesus' ministry. You see, the transfiguration not only called the apostles who witnessed this great mystery, but it continues to be a call for all of us to share in that experience. The path up the mountain proceeds through prayer and encounter with Jesus. It reminds us of the glory of the sacrifice he made For all he loves. This revelation was seen by mortal eyes. The transcendent truth that he is the begotten Son of God. And knowing this is a sign of hope. And like Peter, James, and John, who witnessed this great revelation, we too are truly invited to embrace the path that Jesus prepared. Now, this can beg a question. and It's something you can think about now in this coming week. Sit and think and pray on it. Who is Jesus to you? You see, it indicates to the disciples and to us who Jesus really is. And we are being called to an ongoing transformation in Jesus, beginning right now. We are all invited to do so. The path up the mountain proceeds through prayer and encounter, and it is a reminder for us, indicating where we are heading. We know that the passion of Jesus was a sacrifice he made for all he loved, and we are reminded in this gospel of Christ's glory to come. We're on a mountain. Jesus revealed before mortal eyes. The transcendent truth, as I said, of who he truly is. It is the sign of hope. And like the three who experienced the great revelation, we are invited to embrace this path that Jesus has prepared. So God commanded the apostles to listen to his son. This would give them the true pathway, the new direction 
by knowing who Jesus is, and the apostles would understand who they would become in him. The transfiguration of Christ is a spiritual event within the ordinary, but it is more beautiful and far greater than any ordinary experience. And these apostles would begin a new journey to live their lives no longer for themselves, but for him, as they began in their own transformation to undergo their own trials as they walked to their own transfiguration. This is the path for all those who hear the name of Jesus. At every Mass, we are invited to be changed and to be transformed. So today, as we gather with one another to celebrate this Eucharist, let us hear the word of God telling us, this is my son whom I am well pleased. Listen 